I've been saying this for months and months and months, and I'm going to continue to say it until I'm either proven correct or proven wrong. And if I am proven wrong, I will sadly eat a bunch of crow. But I firmly believe that 2018 is the year of third-party games on Switch. Now, what does that mean exactly? It means that I feel in 2018, Nintendo Switch is going to really be carried in large by, well, third-party games. Now, that doesn't mean there won't be Nintendo games, that there won't be exclusive titles. Of course there's going to be. But I feel like there won't be as many impactful ones as this year. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a bad year. Of course it's not. We're going to get new games announced, and for all we know, maybe Nintendo technically releases more exclusive games for Switch next year than they did this year. But I feel like... The big thing that obviously Nintendo has been missing for many generations now is full third-party support. And while the Switch will not technically have full third-party support because, hey, EA decided to jump off the ship already, uh, it's because third parties, after the culmination of their quarter two uh, financial reports, it definitely sounds like third parties are jumping on board as well. Now, I said all this for months and months before we even knew that was going to happen, but now that we have some evidence to it, I feel confident in standing by my prediction that we're going to see a ton of third-party games in 2018, and not just small ones, although we're going to see some of those, some indie games, some smaller games by AAA developers, but also full console AAA games on Switch. We're going to see a ton, and it's going to be awesome. Now... Let me get into some of my supporting evidence for this from these financial meetings from several different companies. First, we have 2K themselves. Uh, they talked about NBA 2K18 on Switch, and they said, in addition to versions for Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, NBA 2K18 is our debut offering for the Nintendo Switch. So far, we're very pleased with the title's performance on this new platform, and we anticipate continued strong demand across all platforms heading into the holiday season, along with growth of in-game sales. Our NBA 2K series continues to benefit from increasing engagement and recurrent consumer spending. And then they made some general comments for the Take-Two Chief Executive Officer, Strauss Zell Nick said that the Switch install base is growing quite rapidly and they find it a potentially exciting platform. So not only are they saying the Switch is a potentially exciting platform, they said we're very pleased with NBA 2K18's performance on the Nintendo Switch. So one, that probably means NBA 2K19 is coming. If they are pleased with how well the game is selling so far, despite the fact that it kind of had a staggered release where it was only digital day one, physical a month later... Uh, and, and obviously dealing with how some of the games in the cartridge, some of it's a download, and some of the controversy, I guess, I, I guess quote-unquote controversy, surrounding that and having to buy an SD card. Uh, again, is it their fault? Is it Nintendo's fault? Whatever the case may be. <laughs> the fact is that it obviously sold well enough for them to say that they're very pleased with how it's selling. That means NBA 2K19 is probably on the way. And we also know that their own other, you know, one of their studios, Rockstar, is bringing LA Noir, And this could lead to things like Grand Theft Auto V. I don't think uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 would ever come to Switch, even though that releases next year. Uh, I, I just don't see them. Uh, willing to port it at this point to the platform just because it's so far along in development and it has been in development for many years. It's a little late to add a new platform to that mix, but and 2K, they're, they're excited. They're, they're going to bring more than just NBA next year. I guarantee it. Moving on. Marvelous, uh, they have confirmed that they have more Switch support on the way, including both ports and new titles. Uh, they didn't give any details on these games, but they're like the people who do Harvest Moon. Uh, they're, I believe, the producers on uh, No More Heroes or the production company or whatever the case may be. Uh, they've also done like the Fate Extella franchise, uh, Valhalla Knights, etc. Monster Hunter Story, Story of Seasons, obviously they don't control it. They get to do Monster Hunter, it's up to Capcom. But reality is that they have done a slew of, of I guess I, I won't necessarily call these triple A top tier titles, but this is like that B tier that I feel is going to be vitally important on Switch and it's really already performed very well on Switch up to this point anyways. So again, it's just more third party support. 
Uh, then we have Ubisoft, right? Another massive third-party company like 2K, maybe even bigger than 2K. And 19% of their sales in Q2 came from the Nintendo Switch. Uh, this was primarily probably, well, they didn't they didn't say this out loud, but this was probably because of the success of Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. We have no sales figures for that game yet, but I'm guessing it's sold uh, a million, maybe two million plus copies. I can't wait to get some actual sales numbers on that game because I have a feeling it was a huge success and we could see a Mario Plus Kingdom Battle. Uh, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle 2, which I very, very much want. So bad. It's one of my favorite games on Switch. Uh, and here is what they said. Uh, they're very happy with the sales of Switch. This is from Ubisoft. Uh, and they will have some Switch games next year. Now, we do know that technically two Switch games are already announced. There's Steep, which we haven't seen a lot of really since that was announced, and Battle you know, Starlink Battle for Atlas, uh, which looks really, really good. Uh, it's interesting because it's tied into like a, a real-life Toys to Life thing, but it's entirely optional, and you don't have to get it. I don't know. I'm probably going to give it a fair shot next year, try it out, just because it looks a lot like Rogue Squadron, kind of. Um, I'm really excited about the potential of that game and how it's going to do on Nintendo Switch. And obviously we have high hopes that they're going to start bringing some other games. What's nice is that Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle runs on Snowdrop. Snowdrop is their latest engine. And with that success, it can maybe make Ubisoft be a little more risky next year and see some bigger titles. Again, they're not confirming this. They're just saying they're bringing some Switch games next year. And I hope that they're talking about more than just Steep and Battle for Atlas. I hope that means that they are now starting to commit more games internally to that platform because 19% you want to know what that is that's 1% less than the sales they had on Xbox One which you know Xbox One has a lot more units out there right now uh, and obviously it is uh, less than PlayStation 4 but only by 12% uh, which you know PlayStation 4 is almost 70 million units on, out there so uh, that's really really good sales performance for Ubisoft moving on Square Enix Oh, Square Enix. Uh, so, obviously, uh, they, they, during their earnings call, they said that Project Octopath Travelers and Dragon Quest XI Switch seems to be on track for next fiscal year. So, obviously, after March 2018. Uh, Switch's momentum is strong, and Nintendo is doing really good for Square Enix in terms of sales. And again, no exact numbers. They just said the games they have out right now are performing well. Uh, they said that Switch is ideal for middle-range games, which I think is what Marvelous is doing. Uh, and it says uh, Square Enix is really good at making those middle-range games. Again, Project Octopath Travelers would probably be considered one of those. Uh, so they're going to work on these titles aggressively. Uh, and obviously, they noted that these middle-range titles are also great for multi-platform, so it won't be Switch exclusive. You know, I know Octopath Traveler is, but that might be the exception to the rule. Um, it says, when considering games for Switch, Square Enix won't rule out any IPs. That's the most exciting thing about it, is that no IPs. We actually reported on this earlier, but I'm just going over it again because we're talking about third parties. Uh, and it says, uh, new Switch games may become multi-platform, but Square Enix promises to aggressively make games for Switch. Switch's core architecture, and this is really interesting that they note, it is similar to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Again, I talked about this months ago, and people kept doubting me, and I'm like, this is why third parties are going to come, because even even though it's less powerful, it is similar in architecture, which is going to make porting easier. Uh, and it says some adjustments are necessary, but multi-platform games are not impossible to bring to the platform. Like, that's just... Square Enix is on board. They're basically all in on Switch. They're aggressively making games on Switch. I think we could even see, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake and possibly Final Fantasy 15 all decide to come to Switch, even if they're not ready day and date, because... Uh, yeah, if they're this all in, why wouldn't they? Now Square, Secret of Mana HD, come on, get on that, bring it over. Uh, beyond that, this isn't actually a, a big AAA studio, but a Kickstarter by some of the actual devs behind System Shock are looking to remake System Shock. Uh, and Switch is one of the platforms they are hoping to put it on. System Shock, again, uh, I think there was System Shock and System Shock 2, uh, two games I played a ton of on my PC back in the 90s, so I would love to see a remake of that appear on Switch. Uh, and Bandai Namco. So Taguchi revealed that the company plans to reveal three new Switch-exclusive worldwide release titles during spring and summer of 2018, but release windows for those titles were not given. And again, just more and more and more support. And here's the thing. This is just what I was able to gather over the last couple of days. 
more and more companies are going to start talking positively about Switch. There are several indie studios now, like, not necessarily panicking, but like rushing to try to get their games released on Switch right now. Switch is hot. It is red hot. And there's a lot of companies probably wishing that they would have committed to the Switch a year ago. So they could have had titles come out now uh, or even during the summer. Switch is just a hot ticket item, man. It's going to sell 14 million projected units this fiscal year, which puts it around 16 to 17 million units total in 13 months. There's a lot of people that are regretting that they didn't jump on board right away. Koei Tecmo isn't one of them. They jumped on right away, and now they're seeing a big sale success in Fire Emblem Warriors. So again, this isn't necessarily a news report, although it has a bunch of news in it. But what this is, is evidence to the fact that 2018 is going to end up being the year of third-party support on Nintendo Switch. The year that Nintendo wins back all, well, maybe not all, but a vast majority of third-party companies that they either have never had on their platform, which we've already seen proven with Bethesda, or they used to have coming back. This is probably the most third-party support Nintendo is going to see since the Super Nintendo era. Insane. Again, we don't know how many of these games are going to be a sales success. We don't know if Doom is going to sell well or L.A. Noir or Skyrim or the Batman Telltale series that's coming out that I'm picking up, Rocket League. We don't know how well any of these games that are coming out already this month. I mean, literally, this month of November is the biggest third-party month uh, in Nintendo Switch's very short history so far. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how well those games do. But it doesn't look... I mean, it looks like that a bunch of companies are already committing games for next year. Uh, we can't even forget that there's a late port of Wolfenstein 2 coming. And apparently some people are saying that the sales of Wolfenstein 2 um, are not very well, even though the game is massively critically acclaimed. Maybe Switch can kind of swoop in there and become like the primary platform for Wolfenstein. Wouldn't that be nice? Like, uh, you know, having it sell more copies on Switch than it did on other platforms. I'm not saying that that really matters. Matters for, for me per se, but it does show that there'd be an interest level in games like that coming to Switch. And we'll probably tell Bethesda, oh my gosh, we really got to take this seriously. Like that game and Doom selling really, really well would basically tell them that, oh, uh, maybe we should be thinking about bringing some of our other games over there. It might even make Rockstar be like, mm, maybe Red Dead Redemption 2 should be on the platform. Well, let's bring over Red Dead Redemption first, then we'll release the second one. I don't know. I'm some wishful thinking there, but I'm really, really excited. I'm glad that my theory that 2018 was going to be this year of third-party games on Switch seems to be coming true. Obviously, we don't have any big game announcements yet. Uh, we have no new games announced, but uh, my theory will hopefully be proven true in the early parts of 2018, it sounds like, uh, through E3. I think E3 is when I'll finally be able to you know, either eat a bunch of crow or not eat a bunch of crow uh, and it's possible that 2019 could be an even bigger year but 2018 i think is when you're going to see all the third parties hop on board and switch is going to have so many games coming out uh the keeping up with it is going to be nearly impossible for anyone who's trying to collect the entire library and that's what i want i want so many options for games on switch that it appeals to every potential type of gamer out there that's always been my ideal method for the nintendo platforms and it just hasn't been, existed since the super nintendo era so Yes, it looks like it's getting back to it. Thanks, all these third-party companies, uh, for committing to Switch at least next year. I can't wait to see what games you're deciding to bring. Please, Ubisoft, late port of Assassin's Creed Origins. Yes, please. Uh, and you know what, folks? I am Nathaniel Rovajets from Nintendo Prime. And speaking of third-party games, before we sign out here, we are giving away a triple pack. I think it's called the Nintendo Switch Triple A 3-pack of third-party games. At the end of this month, it includes L.A. Noir. Skyrim, and Doom. Of course, these are all M-rated games. You must be old enough to receive them. You, the country you're from or the country you're participating from must also be willing to accept giveaways, and you must obviously meet the age requirement of the game. So, you know, you'll have to check that all for yourself because the age requirements vary in different areas and different lands. Uh, you know, it might be 18 plus in the U.S. or 17 plus, I think, in the U.S., but somewhere else it might be 18. Other places you might be able to do it at 14. I don't know. I'm not from all those countries. I'm only from the United States, so I only know the laws here. But you can enter for free down in the description. There is a Gleam.io link that is a legit giveaway link. And there will be multiple ways to enter. With the primary method being just, hey, subscribe to us here on YouTube. That being said, 
I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike this video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content just like this. And man, I'll catch you in the next one.